Welcome to our time of worship from St Andrew's Salt Elaine Church. It's a delight once again to be sharing this service with Anthony. Anthony will be taking us through much of our service before we come to our communion prayer. Simon is recording my sections from home as I'm still recuperating from my hip surgery, which means that I shall be invisible this morning. Since, unlike many people, I haven't yet had a haircut, that's probably no bad thing. However, you will see Anthony, together with Barbara, who is our reader, and Jan, who will be leading our prayers of intercession. And thank you, as ever, to Simon and Catherine for all their work on the service. During this last week, we have, of course, been reflecting as a nation on the life of Prince Philip. And I know that this will form part of Antony's address and Jan's prayers. But before everything else, as we gather for worship, each in our own homes and spaces, please join me in our opening prayer, taken from Philip Newell's Celtic Prayers from Iona. Let us pray. O God, who brought me from the rest of last night to the new light of this day, bring me in the new light of this day to the guiding light of the eternal. Lead me, O God, on the journey of justice. Guide me, O God, on the pathways of peace. Renew me, O God, by the wellsprings of grace, today, tonight, and forever. And now let's sing our first hymn, led by Simon and members of the choir, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
And it's good morning from me, Anthony, on this third Sunday of Easter. Thank you, Gareth, for allowing me to share this service with you. We continue now with our prayers of penitence. An introduction to these, with verses from St Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. In this short prayer of confession, the response to the bidding, Lord have mercy, or Christ have mercy, is to repeat the bidding. Lord, like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The absolution. Let us pray. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Collect for this third Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Now, Barbara, our first reading, please. In our first reading, the writer describes what happened after Peter had healed the disabled man at the temple gate in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead, to this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Here ends the first reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Luke. 
While the disciples were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before I get into this address, I do need to say that I hope that you have all had as good uh, an Easter as possible, without too many Covid concerns, and with opportunities to witness our glorious burgeoning spring. We are very fortunate in the North Hem Northern Hemisphere that Easter and spring coincide, so that the new life of spring constantly reminds us of resurrection. Alleluia. In a way, it could have been better this morning if our two readings had taken place the other way around. The gospel could well have come first, this telling the story of an encounter with the risen Jesus soon after the first Easter day, whereas the Acts reading repeated an address that Peter had given to a crowd in Jerusalem after they had seen for themselves a healing, all sometime after the Ascension. The same person wrote St Luke's Gospel and the Acts, and a reading of the two books shows that the Gospel ends with the Ascension and the Acts begins with it. The Ascension therefore links the books and links with our prayers too. For it is our prayer that we may know the Kingdom of Heaven, know it fully at the end of our earthly time. This is a wonderful hope and inspiration, inviting, even, call, even calling for, a response much greater than just celebration of our belief that our life has meaning and hope. How can we properly show our thanks to the Lord, who has created, enlivened and sustained us, loved us to death, and promise us through his death and by his resurrection the eternal kingdom of heaven. Most of my reading this last Lent concerned reminding myself how the Bible's Old Testament is so fundamental to the New Testament. Alternatively, substitute in this covenant for testament. In the covenant, God promised the Israelites that if they fully responded to his saving acts in leading them safely out of captivity in Egypt, through the wilderness of Sinai, and into new life in the Promised Land, 
And if they repented of their grumbling and their doubts and their negativity and abide, obeyed the Torah, the commandments, then the covenant God would be their God and they would be his people. The Israelites' response to all that God had done for them must therefore begin with repentance, a fresh start in a new land, a reset if you want. It was of course the same response that Peter asked of his listeners in our Acts reading, a response of acknowledgement that some of Jerusalem's religious people had been responsible for the killing of Jesus the Christ. Yet God, their God, had raised this supreme, this self-same Jesus from the dead, and that the same power that brought his resurrection had brought healing in front of their very eyes. So the people's response must begin with repentance, a new way of living with the previous way cast aside, left behind, with, with its sins forgiven by God, all this undertaken with contrition. Repent, said Peter, turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. This call is much the same for us today, for we all can so easily fail in our discipleship. We might say, though, that we are Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, whether baptised or not. We go to church when we can. We try to say our prayers and read the Bible. Why do we need to repent? Indeed, why are we so constantly called to repentance, to cast aside what is not God's will for us? The simplest answer to this question is because we are simply human, living in a world where we are surrounded and tempted by ungodly influences. We are led into temptation by our culture, by the media, and so much more. We are simply human, mortal, flesh, and the flesh is weak. We can fall down because of our way of life. And we are sucked into often inadequate ways without even realising it. The present COVID pandemic brings some of these to our notice. Here are just three problems we can so easily have. And with each one, I make a link to Prince Philip. Let's begin with arrogance. We attend church. We try to live good lives. We condemn crime, antisocial behaviour, dishonesty. We watch and learn about the terrible things going on just outside our own backyards in Sheffield, but right even to the very ends of the earth. We are better than all this. We have never disobeyed COVID rules or anything like that. Ah, arrogance. One lovely exemplar of a lack of arrogance, of true, true humility in service, has been Prince Philip he could speak to, and clearly enjoyed speaking to, anyone. A second difficulty is entitlement, or better, a sense of entitlement. This, of course, is connected with arrogance. My dear little brother often used to say, when our parents challenged him, never me, of course, about some unruly behaviour. He would say, I'm allowed to, aren't I? Because I am who I am. 
living freely in a so-called civilized society, I am entitled to go where I like and do what I like pretty well all the time, as long as it's legal. I am entitled to choose what I like. Indeed, I have multiple choices because I have a God-given life in a God-created world. Entitlement is more difficult to consider when we think about wonderful Prince Philip. In our world, he had entitlement because he was titled. A direct descendant of Queen Victoria and the married consort of our Queen today. His public position required him to appear both titled and entitled, but we know that he was genuinely modest. Jesus' entitlement was infinite, but his life never showed this. A third reason for repentance again following on from what I have just said, is it taking for granted the blessings we have from God because we are alive and then demeaning those blessings. This is particularly so with our attitude to the earth. To misquote horribly, we can say, the world is ours and all that is in it. An outsider looking at the earth and humankind's way of living, might well conclude that. But who has brought everything into being? We believe that the earth is the Lord's. This we very much included Prince Philip for whom the preservation and protection of God's whole creation mattered so much. He wonderfully used his position to further this in our country, in the Commonwealth, and across the whole world. So, three challenges to respond to and consider in our prayers every day. We may have been thinking that the call for repentance is just for Lent. But trying to be better for God's sake is just for life. How important then is the regular reminder for response to all God's goodness and the necessary repentance that goes with this? For through Jesus Christ we have everlasting life. Our second hymn is very much a spring hymn. In fact, it was one that we sang just last Sunday. Indeed, spring is around us in the outside world, and Easter will be very much still in our hearts too. After this hymn, Jan will be leading our prayers of intercession and then the Lord's Prayer. We sing the hymn, Now the Green Blade Riseth.
If you have a candle, please light it now. After the bidding, risen Lord, please reply, renew us and direct us. Risen Lord, we rejoice in the glory of your resurrection. No tomb can keep you, no door is closed to you, no heart is barred to you. Risen Lord, renew us and direct us. Lord of love, thank you for our many blessings. Thank you for Anthony this morning and Simon and Catherine and all who work so hard for us in our church and in these highly valued online services. Risen Lord, renew us and direct us. Dear Lord, thousands pray for things that we take for granted. Thank you for the beauty of creation and its rich and varied fruits, for clean water, food and shelter, animals and plants, and lovely scenery on our doorstep and in our parks. Forgive us for the times we've taken the Earth's resources for granted and wasted what you've given us. Transform our hearts and minds so we learn to care and share and touch the Earth with gentleness. We pray for the day when every single person has enough food and clean running water. Risen Lord, renew us and direct us. How dark and desolate it must have been for your disciples on that first Good Friday, seeing the one they had placed so much hope in dying on a cross. But then when raised, what joy for them. In these Easter days, the wonder of our risen Christ is close. Your promise is new life with unfailing love surrounding us. Risen Lord, renew us and direct us. People are crying for help in many areas of our world. We pray for many countries, including Myanmar, Indonesia, Yemen, Mozambique, the USA, Northern Ireland and France. In Brazil and India, COVID deaths have reached new highs. We pray for these and many more. Risen Lord, renew us and direct us. Lord Jesus, you taught us to love our neighbour and care for those in need as if we were caring for you. For those who are ill, isolated and lonely, we pray they know you are with them and nothing can separate them from your love. We all know people in special need of prayers at this time and name them in our hearts now in a moment of silence. Risen Lord, renew us and direct us. Heavenly Lord, many people are grieving for loved ones departed. We pray for our Queen and give thanks for the long life of Prince Philip and his support of her. Many of us are very saddened as Pauline, a dear member of our church family, is now departed from us. She gave so much to our church in different ways. She was always there to help so loved by us all. We pray for her very close family, her children, Claire and Jonathan, and her grandchildren and her brother, all devastated at the loss of such a wonderful, loving, kind, warm-hearted lady. She will definitely hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. May all who grieve be comforted that their loved ones now enjoy peace in your eternal heavenly kingdom. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Keeping in our minds Antony's thoughts this morning and Jan's prayers, we come now to the sharing of the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We've come to that part of our service in which we share communion with one another and with the risen Christ. I'm going to use this week a liturgy composed by the Wild Goose Resource Group of the Iona community. Please, as always, join in the words in bold type. He was always the guest. In the homes of Peter and Jairus, Martha and Mary, Joanna and Susanna, he was always the guest. At the meal tables of the wealthy, where he pled the case of the poor, he was always the guest. Upsetting polite company, befriending isolated people, welcoming the stranger, he was always the guest. But here, at this table, he is the host. Those who wish to serve him must first be served by him. Those who want to follow him must first be fed by him. Those who would wash his feet must first let him make them clean. For this is the table where God intends us to be nourished. This is the time when Christ can make us new. So come, you who hunger and thirst for a deeper faith, a holier life, a fairer world. Jesus Christ, who has sat at our tables, now invites us to be guests at his. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. What we do here, we do in imitation of what Christ did first. To his followers in every age, Jesus gave us an example and command rooted in the experience he shared with his disciples in an upstairs room at Passover. On the night he was betrayed, and as they were sitting at a meal, Jesus took a piece of bread and broke it. He gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body. It is broken for you. Do this to remember me. Later, after they had eaten, he took a cup of wine and said, This cup is the new relationship with God made possible by my death. Drink this, all of you, to remember me. So now we do as Jesus did. We take this bread and this wine, the produce of the earth and the fruit of human labour, in these, 
Jesus has promised to be present. Through these, Christ can make us whole. And now, in case we believe that our praise alone fills your purpose, we fall silent and remember him who came because words were not enough. Setting our wisdom, our will, our words aside, emptying our hearts and bringing nothing in our hands, we yearn for the healing, the holding, the accepting, the forgiving, which Christ alone can offer. Look, friends, here is our Lord coming to us in bread broken and wine outpoured. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. An opportunity now to take our bread and our wine or juice. The prayer to be said after communion on this third Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. Our final hymn, along with the second hymn, uh, is taken from the Church Near You website. We sing the great and joyful Easter hymn, Ye Choirs of New Jerusalem.
And now our closing prayers, composed once again by the Wild Goose Resource Group of the Iona community. Let us pray in gratitude, deep gratitude, for this moment, this meal, this day, and those of us gathered together. We give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. Let us say together, May God bring us to the land of peace, to the country of the King, to the joy of eternity. Praise to the Father, praise to the Son, praise to the Spirit, the three in one. Amen.